Hi, and welcome to Toulouse, which is in the south of France, for the 96 indoor trial. We have a star-studded lineup here for you tonight, which will guarantee some spectacular action. We're starting in here, Tommy Avala on his Fantic. He was the unlucky chap and drew number one. With no practice allowed on these sections, he's got the hard task of seeing what's possible and what isn't. Over the winter, Tommy negotiated a new two-year contract with Fantic. So he's quite happy in his head, knowing that he's sorted. And this year he'll be reverting back to his brother as his minder, Yomi. As the other bloke who done it for him was a bit dodgy and uh, he couldn't commit himself. Tommy there just taking the one. Moving on. Beautiful scenery as you can see. This year the theme was set round winter. Just looked as though it had been snowing for a week inside. And apparently it took them 10 days to set this up. Drawing number one out the hat. Doesn't look it's done no harm to Tommy. This is really flowing tonight. Onto this spectacular waterfall section now. Very, very steep. And it wasn't just a trickle of water coming down. It was more like Niagara Falls. And as you see, Tommy getting nowhere near. On to the French hero, John Luke Nick too. He's staying with Beda again. And after changing to them halfway through last season. Very tricky little bit here coming. It's got a 90 degree turn. And as you can see by the size of the chap be behind, these are like six, seven foot up in the air. Jean-Luc not quite flowing yet. A lot of pressure on when you're riding in your home country. Once again in these indoors, if you three three dabs, which is the three, but anything more than three, and that's five marks. So John Luke there taking a maximum. Fighting it up those blocks. But that's okay. Onto the race where the riders are going head to head. Which wasn't so much as a race as it was probably one of the most difficult sections in the actual competition. Very, very steep drop down now. Onto some like mushroom looking things. And uh, made of metal and they were very, very slippy. And once again, as in the race, uh, the loser getting an extra point added to his total. Now they have to turn around and make the way back. As you can see there, John Luke's minder just walked past. So obviously he's covered guts are already. So Tommy can take his time and just make sure he stays on the section. Yomi there, talking him through every inch.
Just his last one to go now. And that was good to get into that position. Lovely ride. He knows it. Moving on, the next pairing to go, our very own Steve Colley. Bit of an indoor specialist. He made that look so easy. Onto this tricky rock section. Very fine line, this one. Lovely jump there. As you can see, that's me in the background, minding for him. As his minder uh, for this year, Jake Miller, took a bit of a tumble in Sheffield and dislocated his knee, so he was hobbling around in the background on crutches. Steve having a bit of a ricochet there, getting away with it. The riders, when they go out, they have uh, seven minutes to complete six sections on their own. And every minute they are over that, they get an extra mark. And then when both riders have been, once you've seen, they go head to head in the race. Quite a tricky exit this as uh, all the rocks were setting sandy sort of going. So it wasn't like a normal indoor. That was a lovely ride. Onto this waterfall. And Steve was getting nowhere near and taking an early bath there. On to world champion, Geordie Tarries. Not been flying over the winter. Been way off pace. But perfect balance there. And that was a good ride. Probably one of the easier sections. As long as you could flip turn to the right here, it wasn't a problem. Perfect. Now coming to the high part. I actually walked up there with Steve to inspect the section. Nearly froze. It's higher than that looks. So, Geordie on to tackle this final waterfall. As you can see there, the, the beginning of it isn't as easy as it looks. Let's see if Geordie can get up. See over there his minder behind, just checking the time, making sure he doesn't go over that seven minutes. And Geordie's not very successful either. 
onto the race again. Steve, as you can see, a bit of a nutter. Very, very slippy. But he's halfway there already. Looks like Geordie's come to grief already. So once again, Steve can take his time. And just hope he doesn't make any mistakes. That was a brilliant ride there from Steve. Best there was all night, I think. Well done. Next man out, Mark Cologne on his new Montessa. First time this was seen. Not as though he's doing a lot of good already. Taking a couple of slack ones there. Much slimmer this new bike. More on par now with the gas gas and the beater. After those couple of early shaky prods, Mark just settled the nerves. And he's out just for the two. Second hazard. Once again, a very tricky corner here. No room for error. Unbelievable where they go. Absolutely brilliant. As you can see Mark's in no hurry. These top boys know they can afford to take one or two on time if they have a good run in the sections. They all make that look so easy. Another clean there for Mark. He's on a, he's on a roll. Just showing you the actual height of the sections. From a distance, doesn't look anything. So if you're actually there walking them, you wouldn't believe it. So once again, on to this final waterfall. Mark just having a hefty one up there. He's still got 20 or 30 foot to go up staircase. As you can see, very, very slippery. It on for a couple. Brilliant ride there. The crowd love it. Moving on to Miglio. He's had a switch from Gas Gas to Beda over the winter. Very unusual to see him on it. Thank you. 
not an indoor specialist, is Zanato. That'll do, just the prod. So, to the right. As you can see, back, back wheel spinning. No traction whatsoever. In fact, it was easier to come this way than it was to go on the reverse journey. In fact, Donato had already crashed again as his miner had walked down the waterfall and then jumped on these mushrooms and Donato stood no chance with water on Tom. He went down before he even got his feet off the pegs. So, looks like Mark should be one of the finalists. Another man who's had a change throughout the winter, Bruno Camozzi. Been on beta last year, had a very successful season. But this year, going to that Spanish factory, Gas Gas. His minder there in the background, Philip Blatier. So if these two blokes push in front of you in the world round, I don't think you'll be arguing much. Two of the biggest blokes in trials. Taking the prod lining himself up and opting for a shortcut, which in fact wasn't allowed, and he was given a five. Normally the French organisers have some riders to test these sections. So if Bruno flies up here, well, we should know whether he was the tester or not. No, but using all that power he's got, should be able to walk that bike up there. But opted for the easy way out. So, last man to go in the heat was our own Dougie Lampkin. Excellent recovery there. Another couple inches to the right, and he'd have been down on the ground, and that'd have been five marks. Excellent stuff. Doug's on a bit of a roll this year. There's a couple of weeks before this. Took the big win in Sheffield at our first indoor. And with a clean like that, 
It's not doing his chances any harm whatsoever. Beautiful balance. Once again in the background, Mart giving him instructions. As you can see, Doug quite a quick rider. Doesn't waste any time. Lovely job. So Steve already assured of his place in the final. If Doug can just keep it together, he'll be joining him. Nice. Not many riders had catches up this waterfall, but uh, John Lampkin was out there, and Martin said he'd like him standing there, so he went and borrowed Doug's Gore-Tex suit. As you can see, he stood in the middle of it. Just gives that rider a little bit extra confidence. No room whatsoever there. Did you see John Boy's loving it? I think, in fact, it was the only shower he had all week. Just five on the very last step. But that was a great effort. Almost making it up there. Bruno getting up in one, just with a dab, and they're overtaking him again. So obviously the pressure's on Doug now to catch up on the return trip. If Bruno gets up this on the left, he's got it in the bag. So, as you can see, the four riders going through to the final. Steve Colley, Mark Clome, Dougie Lampkin, and Tommy Avala. And as you can see, world champion Jordi Tarres missing out once again. But we start the action with Tommy again. Sections now in reverse, all apart from that waterfall. By now, of all the riders over these logs, they're only banded in. We're getting very loose and making it a little bit more tricky. In the final, on every section, it's the worst rider going first. So once again, Tommy has the hard task of showing all the other riders how to do it. Looks okay so far. 
He'll settle for that. Long with Scooter. These gaps don't look anything. But not a lot of room for error. That block there, very, very short. Only just the bike's length on top. Hitting that hard enough. And they're almost coming back, so taking the steady one to make sure of it. A lot of these riders and indoors don't like it when the obstacles move around, just don't feel so confident. Mark there, front wheel touching the floor. So that was an early five penalties for him. Onto the best in the heat, Steve Colley. So that means he'll be going last on every section. He's got a bit of pressure on him. Fact here, Steve, liking his big jumps, was going to try and miss one of these piles of logs out and jump about 15 foot onto the next one. Almost doing it, just taking the one but the crowd love it. Obviously doing it that way saves a load of time, as in the final, the riders have one minute per section to get through, and every 30 seconds they are over that, they get a mark. Second hazard. Tommy and Dougie had been through this one with a marker piece, I think. This was a tricky bit, though. Getting the engine cover off this log as it was such a drop with the front wheel. Quite funny as Tommy and Dougie had got over this bit no problem. And as you'll see with Steve, it must be the different shape of bash plates that gets them stuck on top. Mark fighting it all the way. Not quite flowing yet. Nevertheless, Mark gets out of it. Steve up that first step, okay. Now this is the part of section, part of the section that was going to wind Steve up for the rest of the evening. He was on here for about 20 minutes almost. <laughs> Only joking, but uh, he just could not get it off. As you can see, the front of the bash plate so steep on the gas gas. And it just wouldn't go over.
There's no way you could do it like that as the front wheel kept dropping in the hole. So you had to try and get your weight back and try and get that back tire to grip. But every time it used to slide around on the log. As this is going on, the clock's ticking away. Topped in for the safe one, but then missing it with the front wheel. And having a nightmare of a section. Back to Tommy again. Considering he was going first, he was having a brilliant ride. Couple of ways here to do this corner. Either a 90 degree flick turn to the left, or like this, as Tommy's doing it, just sumping out. And just creeping both wheels up on the edge and over. Nice ride there. Doug nearly wiping his dad out there on the top of those logs. So the riders always like the minded to stand there. Not as though they're in a position to catch it, but uh, just gives them all that confidence to attack the section. Doug just getting it right before he sets off. And almost missing that one with his front wheel. But a one's okay. See there, Mark opting for the other way, much easier. All just depends which way you can flick turn to, whether you're better going left or right. Steve there, nearly running off with his front wheel, having a safe one. Steve now needing to clean the end of this section get a bit of confidence back. Knowing him, he'll go for the same approach as Mark. That part of the section that Doug just rode around, didn't look anything but already took five off Mark and uh, Tommy. But Steve once again going for a different approach, missing out half the section and jumping from block to block. Unbelievable stuff. I think this boy's got the biggest set of koalas there are. So it's all down to this final waterfall. Is anyone going to conquer it this time? The best up it so far, I think, was Mark with a two in the heats. Tommy just winding it up, clearing it out. Excellent stuff. Just going, going a little bit quicker than he expected. Great stuff from Tommy. Yeah. 
Doug's been putting a lot of practice in over the winter, as you can see by his riding. His balance is just unbelievable. Once again, the gopher, John Boy, standing in the middle of it. Doug forcing that beater up. As you can see, he's back with rot on the edge of that step. Big one there. Let's see if he can make it out the top this time. Come on, Doug. Doug trying to go step at a time. Looking okay. Brilliant, just for the prod. Let's see if Mark can better his two, which he had in the heat. If anyone can do it, he will. Unbelievable. For me, the best ride of the night. The French crowd absolutely love it. So, Steve watching that, let's see how he gets on. Steve is catching the sump and obviously not one of his favourite sections. But John, worth his weight in gold there, saving a set of bars. So we're just the races to go. If Doug can get through this okay, he's got it in the bag. Fighting it, he just won't put those feet down. Tommy just gone over that. He's took the lead. But Doug knows he can afford to have one on time if Tommy beats him through the hazard. Just in the background there, you see Tommy falling off. So Doug, with all the time in the world, goes on to clean the hazard. Steve and Mark, very, very quick across that first piece. This was going to be the best one of the night, as we all thought. But Mark's disappeared, and so Steve. A great race, come to nothing. So as you can see, a great win there for Dougie here in Toulouse. He's definitely flowing, so things are looking good for him in this coming outdoor season. So from all of us here in France, we hope you've enjoyed our coverage and look out for some more spectacular video action throughout the year.